So today we'll do the, oops, right. So today we'll do a meditation on cultivating the last two parameters, concentration and wisdom, with the idea that we enthuse ourselves to develop these qualities in our mind stream. So to begin, we can get comfortable, making sure we've got a yeah, comfortable position on the chair or the cushion. And making sure that the back is straight and shoulders relaxed, head relaxed. Face relaxed. Gently becoming aware of the sensations or feelings in the body. When you're ready, you can take a long breath in and exhale, letting go of any thoughts, tensions, any worries, anything keeping you from being fully present. And so we can take a moment to develop our motivation for this meditation. Recalling that, as our teachers remind us, the purpose of our life is, a, is to be of benefit to others. If we want to make our life meaningful, we do so by being in service to others. And that doesn't mean doing big things. It really means doing our practice, the things of our lives with an altruistic motivation. And so we can think that we're doing this meditation to develop our qualities, our hearts, our minds, our enthusiasm, our practice, so that we can grow in the path as part of our journey to enlightenment, so that we can be of the best and most useful possible benefit to all sentient beings without exception. And when we step out with an altruistic motivation, the wish to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all, we're not alone. We're supported in our journey. And so we can take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. So uh, imagining the merit fields of the Guru Buddha in front and ourselves surrounded by all sentient beings we can do the refuge prayer three times. Sangye chodam soki choknamma janto bado dani yapsuji dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki Jola penchit sangye jupar sho. Sangye chodan soki choknam la. Jancho bado dani kepsuchi. Dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki. Jola penchit sangye jupar sho. Sangye chodan soki choknam la. Jancho bado dani kepsuchi. Dagi jin sogi pe sonam ki. 
Jola Pentia Sange Jubar So at the heart of refuge, we can spend a few minutes um, breathing meditation to calm the mind, taking as the object of meditation either the air coming in and out of the nostrils or the rising and falling of the tummy, whichever is convenient for you. And we do that for five minutes.
And so with a mind that is more calm and focused and relaxed, we can turn our attention to the meditation on the last two of the perfections, concentration and wisdom. And so in order to make effort to develop and practice them, then we really need to be convinced of their benefits. So to begin, try and think how useful it would be to have a strong quality of concentration, able to hold a mind on a virtuous object for as long as you wish. Imagine being able to choose your object of concentration, the focus of your mind, and hold it there at will without distraction, sleepiness, we could develop a, a valid cognition and then hold it. can think how wonderful it would be to have this quality of mind where we can choose our object of focus and hold it for as long as we wish. And what would it do for our practice and for our quality of life, our well-being? And not only that, whatever we focus on, our mind would be so much more powerful. So our virtue, our virtuous states of mind. Sometimes our virtues are a bit like laundry blowing in the wind. You know, they're there, but they flap about a bit. But imagine if we had the strength and power of a concentrated mind. And without the, um, concentration, even if we had the realizing, the wisdom realizing emptiness, it would be like having the ax that could cut the tree, but we don't have any power to hold it. So no matter how many times we, we hit the trunk of the tree, it, it doesn't make a difference. So if we don't have concentration, strength, to apply the antidote to our ignorance, 
And even if we develop the wisdom realizing emptiness, without concentration, it will be, it won't be powerful. Or if we develop bodhicitta and no concentration, then it won't last. We'll quickly get distracted to something else, probably non-virtue. And so we might not have much concentration now, and we might think that it's difficult to develop it, but Shantideva says there's nothing that doesn't get easier with familiarization. And if we want to develop realizations of the path in future, then we can see having this powerful concentrated mind will really help us. So try to develop a sense that this really is a wonderful quality to develop. And so next we can think about wisdom. The wisdom that sees reality as it is. Wisdom that cuts the ignorance that is the root of samsara. So for us, we might think wisdom is difficult Maybe we get discouraged because we don't understand the teachings. But on the other hand, they say there's only one root of samsara. One root problem, one thing to solve. And if we solve that, we can stop samsara for ourselves. And then we can help stop it for others. How amazing would that be? To have the tool, the antidote. that can cut the root ignorance of samsara once and for all. Not just for ourselves, but imagine what it would be like to be able to help others to become free from samsara forever. And so even if it's difficult, as Lama Zoprimpoche says, it's a one-time job. And so with that one tool, we can accomplish so much for ourselves and then for others.
And so try to get a sense that if we really want to free sentient beings, if we really want to be of maximum benefit, the wisdom that cuts the ignorance that's at the root is what we need and how amazing it would be to develop that. And again, as Shanti Deva says, there's nothing that doesn't get easier with familiarization. So try to cultivate a sense that wisdom really is something worthwhile to develop. And we cultivate the wish to develop it. And we can think how wonderful it would be to cultivate all the parameters and realizations of the path. And we can remember that whatever realizations we wish for, from guru devotion to bodhicitta, concentration, wisdom, they're available to us. Our teachers were once like us, but they studied, they practiced, and they either completed the path or realized some stage along it. And we have Buddha nature we have this precious human rebirth. We have conditions like teachers and dharma, supportive friends, communities. We have a wealth of opportunity. And potential. And what lies before us is an open road. And it doesn't really matter how fast or slow we walk. If we take one step forward and two steps back. But all that matters is that we face in the right direction. And we keep going. one foot in front of the other, with practice and with familiarization, we too will get there. And so in the remaining minute, take some time to Make a resolve, dedicate your efforts to developing the path as best you can and to make your life dharma as much as you can.
put the teachings into practice as best you can. all sentient beings. And so just as we motivated for the benefit of all sentient beings, we can dedicate that all our merits, our positive potential, all our qualities, all our efforts. We offer and we dedicate for the highest, perfect, complete enlightenment of all sentient beings. For every single one of them, wherever they are, to receive benefit. We add all of our merits to the merits dedicated by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And we say mine too. May whatever merit, positive potential, energy I have contribute to this great accumulation of positive energy dedicated for the perfect happiness and freedom from suffering of every single sentient being. We can dedicate for world peace, for love and compassion in the hearts of all sentient beings. And we can dedicate for every sentient being that has karma, the potential to benefit from our prayers, that we can become wish fulfilling for them. Whatever they need, may it be fulfilled in accordance with the Dharma and in accordance with their highest good. So we can dedicate also for the love. Okay. All right, so we use the dedication prayers. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. Long life prayer for Lama Zipparimshe, you who uphold the subduer's moral way, who serve as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Majinat's victorious doctrine, who masterfully accomplish magnificent prayers honoring the three jewels, Savior of myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. For His Holiness, the wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, to be incomparably kind, tends and gets away, beseech, may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. For Osa, Venerable One, to you whose kindness exceeds that of all the conquerors for those wanderers in far off places, especially the West. Mindful of your loving concern for us, in intentionally descending again into a family of a far distant land, we make this request, O Lama, please, please live long. Vigesha Tipton Cherub, 
beloved teacher, leading your students towards wisdom and compassion, explaining through exacting discernment the steps of the graduated path. You are the unequal guide. Please live a long and stable life. And you can add your own dedications as well. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you.